where it is in the top three of what is called this, this kind of trinity of high metabolic rate organs. And uh, it's always, even when we're asleep, its metabolic demands are still remarkably high. So it has a very high energetic need. It, it has a high demand and it needs a lot of energy. And that is uh, actually helping us identify problems that we'd never really seen before, specifically with neurological disorders, not just Alzheimer's disease as maybe the lowest hanging fruit, but there are numerous neurological disorders now that appear to have a common core of a metabolic deficiency. And you, you're accurate uh, in pointing out glucose. Glucose is one of the two fuels that the brain primarily relies on. Um, we live in a culture and a society, the way we eat and live, where we're demanding that the brain only use glucose. And as luck would have it, that's the energy source that the brain is increasingly having a hard time use for various metabolic reasons. It's something we get readily in the diet, but even more, thankfully, we make all that we need. Also, even in the absence of eating any, the liver is kind of the great giver when it comes to nutrients uh, in, in, the, in the body. And if it senses that blood glucose levels are starting to drop, it will simply start making glucose and sharing it with the body. Indeed, it does it so well that the liver is capable of making up for any absence of carbohydrate in the diet. So that's why someone could go on a multi-day fast, not be eating any carbohydrate, and yet their glucose levels stay totally normal. That's because the liver is able to make literally all that we need. While our ability to put glucose into the blood is as good as it ever was, our ability to move it out of the blood is what's affected. And that ultimately means, paradoxically, we have an increase in blood glucose and yet an increasing inability to utilize it. You know? And so it becomes a bit of a vicious cycle, but it is that inability to move glucose from the blood into the cells where it would be used for energy that is, is really uh, appears to be the foundational issue in, in many neurological problems, even Alzheimer's disease. Um, the hippocampus is the little pocket of the brain that's most relevant to memory and learning as we kind of form this conversation on Alzheimer's. Much of the glucose that's coming into the brain to be burned for energy requires the humble hormone insulin. Everyone has heard of insulin and insulin's most famous effect not that I'm saying it's most important because insulin does a lot of very important things, but its most famous effect is what it does to glucose, where insulin will essentially come and knock on a door, including the neurons in the brain, and it will open those doors and allow the glucose to come from the blood into the cell, providing the cell with fuel. Well, as the brain starts to become insulin resistant, now you have insulin politely knocking on the door. Maybe even it's pounding on the door of the cell, but the cell won't open up and allow the glucose in. So you have this kind of bizarre kind of demented version of the rhyme of the ancient mariner, where it's not water everywhere, but glucose, glucose everywhere, but not a drop to drink. That's sort of the cry of the brain, where it literally blood glucose levels may be twice as high as they should be, and yet the brain can't get it because insulin isn't working well enough. That's where the inefficiency comes in. Normally, glucose would be providing it because the person's eating so much glucose. And, and, but as the brain starts to become increasingly insulin resistant, now you start to have this energetic gap where the brain needs this much energy and because glucose is the only fuel available to it at the moment, although there's another fuel, but it, it, there's this gap. And that right. gap is what starts to create not only the memory learning and deficits like you see in Alzheimer's disease, but even the reduced dopamine production that you see with Parkinson's disease or the epilepsy uh, that you see, uh, the seizures that you see with epilepsy and even migraine headaches. All of these, despite being on their surface, distinct disorders, they all share this known and confirmed what's called brain glucose hypometabolism. In other words, a brain that is burning less glucose than normal. Annotated and summarized, easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points. From the website, doctorstotrust.com, you can view the summary notes and share or print the PDF of those notes.